Welcome back to Bargaining in War. In this lecture, we begin our exploration on whether preventive wars still arise with endogenous power shifts. Think about what we've learned in the last couple of lectures. There, we were studying a model of exogenous power shifts. Think about what that word means, and specifically the prefix, exo, external. In those models, we didn't have an explanation for why power was shifting. It was just happening in the model. We wrote it into the model, and it was happening. No state was choosing to grow more powerful over time. It just was there. Some sources of power shifts look like that. A good example is changing demographics. Imagine that your country has a large cohort of zero to five-year-olds. Then over time, those zero to five-year-olds will eventually become military age. And when that happens, the balance of power is going to shift favorably to your country. Lots of sources of power shifts don't follow that sort of exogenous trajectory. A great example of that is nuclear weapons. If a state wants to gather nuclear weapons, it can't just go find them on trees. It has to make an active decision to invest in them, wait some time, and then perhaps gain some benefits as a consequence of having those nuclear weapons well into the future. This is an example of an endogenous power shift. That word, that prefix, endo, meaning internal to the system. So if we want to study a model with endogenous power shifts, we need to actually give the rising state some sort of control over its balance of power in the future. And this is not a trivial addition to the model. There are reasons to think that this is going to result in something very different than what we've seen before. Think about the preventive war outcome in the exogenous power shift model. This is a very bad outcome for the rising state. The rising state wants to get into the future where it has a larger share of the balance of power and then use that to extract more concessions out of the declining state. If in contrast, the declining state fights a preventive war immediately, then the rising state is never getting those benefits. And moreover, it's fighting a war at the time that it is the weakest. This is a very bad outcome for the rising state. So it stands to reason that perhaps a rising state might want to alter how powerful it's going to be in the future. And if it realizes that causing a large shift in the balance of power would result in the declining state fighting a preventive war, perhaps the rising state will take a little bit more of a moderate measure in its power shift approach. So that's what we're going to be studying here. And specifically in this lecture, we're going to introduce the model and also discuss some of the preliminaries of solving the model, and we'll finish up in the next lecture. I've actually done a lot of the work already on the screen. So the way that this game is going to work is that we're going to have B, the rising state in the previous model, choose a power distribution P for the second stage, that post-shift period. And specifically, P will be some value between 0 and P prime. Remember that both P and P prime represent A's share of the distribution of power. So P is what's going to be happening in the future, and P prime is the default level right now today. So by choosing P between zero and P prime, B's choice, if it's close to zero, is saying in the future, A will have no power and B will have all of it. Whereas if it is choosing something closer and closer to P prime, this is B saying, I elect not to have any real shift in the balance of power at all. So after B makes that decision, the states play the preventive war game that we explored last time. Just like it is before, with the only difference being that B has chosen that future distribution of power. Now, this is convenient that we're actually having the same game as before as being this second step on your screen, because we've already solved that game. We know exactly what happens. There is a bit of a difference, though, if we're going to try solving this version of the game with an endogenous power shift, which is that previously we had solved the cut points of the equilibrium as a function of the discount factor delta. When delta was very small, we had peace occurring. In particular, when delta was very, very small, we had A making some sort of concession to B and then having peace transpire 
Whereas if Delta was in this middle region, then A could extract everything in the first period and then broker a piece in the second stage. Meanwhile, when Delta was large, now on the right end, we had war occurring. Again though, all of these cut points are in terms of Delta. This isn't as helpful for solving the new game, the endogenous power shift game, because of B's choice in the first stage being a choice in the distribution of power in the second stage. So our first step towards solving this new interaction is going to be to redo this sort of figure in terms of the P values rather than in terms of delta. Once we've done that, we'll have a complete mapping of what happens as a function of P, and then we can calculate the expected utility for B for each of those parameter regions. And then finally, B's optimal decision is simply going to be the P value that maximizes its utility. All we're going to be doing for this lecture, of course, is refiguring this graph in terms of P. So let's go ahead and do that. Let's see if we can establish when war occurs as a function of P. So can we recreate this parameter region? Well, this parameter region represents the case where delta is sufficiently large. In particular, it's greater than one minus P prime plus CA divided by one minus P minus CB. So we want to put this in terms of P. So let's go ahead and multiply everything off of that denominator. We have delta one minus P minus CB. And let's see, that's greater than one minus P prime plus CA. We want to solve for P. The next thing we should be trying to do is divide off that delta perhaps. So one minus P minus CB is greater than one minus P prime plus CA divided by delta. And then we need to move the P over to here. And then we just move this over and then we're done. So we get P less than one minus CB minus one minus P prime plus CA divided by delta. And that's our first parameter region. So if we're recreating this figure, which will ultimately be, be very helpful for what we want to do with calculating the expected utility for each of those parameter regions, then let's go ahead and redraw that here. So this is going to be a value between zero and P prime, which is representing P. And we have our first cut point here, which is one minus CB minus one minus P prime plus CA divided by delta. And if we have a P value less than that, we have war occurring. Now, if you just visually inspect this value right here, it's very obvious that this could be some sort of negative quantity. And if that's the case, if this is a negative quantity, then it's not possible for B to select a value of P that results in war. So now that we've done that, we figured out this parameter region where war is occurring. We just need to figure out where this parameter region is occurring. And then presumably this parameter region will fall in between those two cut points. So the last thing to figure out in terms of drawing out cut points is reconfiguring this quantity in terms of P. So let's just drop that here. I'm gonna erase this so we can just be directly referencing what's above. Get rid of this as well. And what do we have? Right now we're trying to find out where delta is less than one minus P prime minus CB divided by one minus P minus CB. And we wanna put this again in terms of P. So to do that, let's go ahead and multiply both sides by the denominator. One minus P minus CB less than one minus P prime minus CB. And what now? Well, we divide off the delta, we get one minus P minus CB less than one minus P prime minus CB divided by delta. And then to solve for P, we'll just move the P over and then this to the other side. And so we get P greater than one minus CB minus one minus P prime minus CB divided by delta. Let's go ahead and stick that in right here. One minus CB minus 
1 minus p prime minus cv divided by delta. And we have peace occurring here and here. The difference, of course, though, is that in this middle region, we have x1 equaling 1. That's going to be important for calculating the expected utility for each of these parameter regions, which is the task for the next lecture. And here we have a more complicated value. It's p prime minus delta p divided by 1 minus delta plus cb as x1. So let's just go ahead and make sure that I'm doing this right. This is x1 equal to p prime minus delta p divided by 1 minus delta plus cb. Is that a plus? It is a plus. All right, so we are good. So we now have solved for the equilibrium of this game as a function of p. We know what's happening in the sub game where b has already made a decision about the balance of power in the future, and we know what's going to be playing out after that as a consequence of that decision. So to finish solving this game and to figure out whether we're going to have preventive war occur or not, well, we have to figure out what the expected utilities are for each of these regions and then figure out the p-value that maximizes it. That's going to be the subject of the next lecture. Before we wrap up here, let's just quickly reinterpret what's going on in each of these parameter regions as a function of p. So when p is very, very small, that's this region here, that's saying that b has chosen a very large shift in the balance of power. And so this is in fact so large that a prefers fighting a preventive war to allowing it to occur. In this more moderate region, there is still a decent shift in the balance of power, so much so that b is willing to accept nothing in the first stage because it's still going to be getting so much value out of the second stage. But it's not such a large shift in the balance of power that A wants to fight a preventive war. And so instead, A extracts everything from this first stage, and then in the next stage, it makes a concession. So we have peace. In contrast, when P is very close to P prime, that's this final region here, now A has to make some sort of concession in the first stage. Otherwise, B is not going to be okay with that. It would rather fight a war. A wants to avoid that, and so it makes a small concession. B doesn't see so much value in the future that it's willing to forego everything today because the shift in the balance of power isn't very large. Okay, that wraps up this lecture. In the next lecture, we'll actually solve for the equilibrium of the overall endogenous power shift game and see whether we have preventive wars occurring or not. Hope you enjoy this. Hope to see you next time. Take care.